So basically, we've been able to solve for missing pieces of a right triangle using, using our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's kind of been our go-to when dealing with right triangles. Okay? There are a certain set of special right triangles, and I'd say 100% of the time presented on some sort of SAT or standardized test, where it's using right triangles, right triangles with a certain uh, two different, like, let's say, ratios in which you have a 60-30-90 triangle, right? You kind of have that, that one to two to three kind of ratio. You have 30 degrees times two, 60 degrees, 30 times three, 90 degrees. We have a 30-60-90 triangle here, right? So there's a couple, there's two, there's two, types of right triangles in which, based on their angle measure, there is a ratio of, the, of, of their sides is created. Now everything goes off of like what's opposite. So the ratio kind of goes like what's opposite to 30, that, that's your x. That's your x. Um, or we'll say your 1, right? And you'll see what a ratio, we'll get to know a little bit more about ratios here. It's basically 1, the square root of 3 to double the ratio, right? That's your, that's your 30, 60, 90 there kind of ratio. This is the one type of, or one of the type of triangles we'll be talking about. And basically, whatever this side is, this is square root of 3 of that and also, and also double. So for example, if I had, if I had a, uh, a triangle where I had a side, let's just use real simple, if I had a side 2, 2 for my side opposite 30, okay, I'd be able to use my ratio of x, x squared to 3, to x to find to find these other two missing sides. And I can do that because of the ratio. And basically, because this is two, this is two, my side opposite 60, now the ratio is 30, 60, 90. So the side opposite 60 will be basically two squared to three, and the side opposite 90 will be double, will be double of what my side opposite 30 was, or, or four. And this is the e one of the easier ones, the one with the 30, because you just go from 30 to 60 by multiplying square root of 3, and you go to 30 to 90 by multiplying by 2. Okay, here's one example here. And that allows me to find the side opposite 60 to be 2 square root of 3, and the side opposite 90 to be 4. Okay, there are other, there are other examples of a 30, 60, 90 where they will give you the side opposite 60, let's say. Let's say they use 9. And basically what's asked of you is, okay, if your side is opposite, if your side opposite 60 is 9, what's your side opposite 90 and what's your side opposite 30? Well, the one thing you have to go to right away is that ratio you guys have. X, X squared to 3 and 2x. Uh, they actually show you this at the beginning section of each SAT right away. They show you this 30-60-90 ratio. A lot of students don't realize that they're being given a 30-60-90 triangle on an SAT and that the formula is given right in the beginning of the section and they don't know where to start. But what you need to consider is like, okay, this side opposite not, uh, 60 is 9, correct? We have a 9 for that. Now, if I'm trying to find out what x is and what, the, and what 2x is, one, one, basically, one way I can do is say, okay, if the side opposite 60 is x squared to 3, and the side opposite 60 has a measure of 9, then I can say 9 is equal to x squared to 3, right? And if I want to solve for what x is, I can just simply divide each side by square root of 3, and I can get, 
Let's go up here. I can get x is equal to 9 over square root of 3. Now, one thing you have to know about math, this is what we call an irrational number. It's not a real number. So one thing you have to do, and they call it, you have to conjugate. You basically have to get this square root of 3 off the bottom. And one way to do that is to multiply by 1. And if you see square root of 3 over square root of 3, that's 1. I'm not changing the fraction. I'm just changing how it looks. So let me multiply across here. I get 9 square root of 3. And 3, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is what? It's 9. Right? And we know square root of 9 is 3. And then I could also simplify the 9 and 3 here. And I could get 3 square root of 3. Now that's my x. That tells me x is 3 square root of 3. Which tells me, which tells me my side opposite 30 degrees over here. That tells me that this is 3 square root of 3. And if I know, if I know that the side opposite 90 is 2x, so the side opposite 90 degrees is 2x, and I know x is 3 square root of 3, then I could just, now when you're multiplying two numbers with a radical, you're just, you could just multiply basically the 3 and the 2. So the side opposite uh, 90 is 6 square root of 3. Here's your ratio here, 6 square root of 3. And basically what I'm able to do is find all my sides of my 30, 60, 90 based on, based on a ratio right here. Okay? Now this one's tougher because you have to go from 60 to 30 and then, th and then from 30 to 90. And I'm going to give you guys like a little chart to work with when we're trying to find these 30, 60, 90s. Just kind of like, we'll give you some of the steps. Basically, okay, if they give you a 60, divide by square root of 3, multiply by 2. I'm going to give you guys that. Let's just look at one more example here. We've looked at, we've looked at a 30, 60, 90 where they give us the 30, they give us the 60. Now we're going to look at one where they give us, they give us the 90. And I've kind of showed you, when you get the 30, you multiply by square root of 3, you multiply by 2. When you get the 60, you divide by square root of 3, and then you multiply by 2. This is step 1, this is step 2 here. 30, 60, 90. Let's say they give you, I'll just a little diagram here, so you see opposite 90. Let's use, uh, I don't know, let's use 10 here. Okay? I know the side opposite, I have my ratio, x squared to 3. 2x. I know, I know the side opposite 90 is 10. Okay. And I know basically I always wanna, I always kind of want to go back to 30. Because if I go back to 30, I have my x. Now the side opposite 90 is 10. And the ratio for 90 is 2x. So if I want to find what x is, I could just say 10 is equal to 2x divided by 2 x is equal to 5. Now if I have 5 for x, all I need to do to get my side opposite 60 is just multiply by that square root of 3. And here I have all my sides, let's say this is 60, 5 square root of 3, let's say this is 30, this is 5 here, okay? Basically I'm filling out my triangles using a ratio and you know, getting my x. Now here, again, you went from 30, you went times 2 to get your 90, times square root of 3 to get your 60. Here you divided by square root of 3 to get your 30, multiplied by 2 to get your 90. Here, here was different, you went from 90 to 30 by dividing by 2, and then you went from 30 to 60 by multiplying square root of 3. A little bit different here because here you divided by 3 and multiply by 2. Here you're dividing by 2 and multiplying by 3. Okay. Now there is another, there is another triangle with a ratio that we want to work with. Right? And the best way to kind of understand this triangle here is let's just say, let's just say I gave you 45, 45, 90. I gave you, I gave you an isosceles right triangle. Meaning if two sides are the same, 
the angles are the same. Now, if this side is 1, that means this side is 1, what's my hypotenuse? Well, let me just look at, let me look at a Pythagorean theorem and see what happens there. 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to c squared. 1 plus 1 is equal to c squared. 2 is equal to c squared. Take the square root. c is equal to square root of 2. And that, that's the same thing here, same thing here. This is kind of how I come up with my, my ratio for a 45, 45, 90. Meaning that whatever, whatever my side, whatever my side opposite 45 is, I got a 45, 45, 90. The ratio is x, x, x squared to 2. The 45 is a little easier to work with. Let's say I have opposite 45 at 8. Okay, you know, okay, side opposite 45 is 8. I know it's the same thing. These two angles are the same, so the two sides are going to be the same. That's why they're both x. And then I can go from here to here just simply by multiplying 8 squared over 2. Okay, it gets a little bit more challenging when when they give you the side opposite 90, this one's easy because you're just dividing, or you're just multiplying by the square root of two. If you get a 45, 45, 90, and they give you, uh, they give you a side, let's say, let's say 10, like we did the other one, in order to go back to 45, well think about the same thing. To go from 45 to 90, you multiply it by square root of two, so to go back to 45, well, you probably are going to want to divide by square root of 2. And it makes sense, because the ratio for 90 is x square root of 2. And your side opposite 90 is 10. So if 10 is equal to x square root of 2, well, I can solve for my x by dividing by square root of 2. Now, as I mentioned before, you can't leave, you cannot leave a square root of 2 on the bottom. This is a rational number, meaning there, is, there isn't any number that ends repeating, non-terminating, decimal. So what we need to do is multiply by 1, or square root of 2 over 2, 10 square root of 2. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, or 2. And then you can reduce once again, and you get an answer of 5 square root of 2. Okay? Be careful when you get a 10 for your 90 that you just don't go back and say that this is 5. That's not the correct ratio. Actually, it's 5 squared to 2. And if you end up with a problem, let's say I get um, my side opposite 90 is 11. And I get 11 squared to 2. I get this. And up with 11 squared to 2 over 2. You can't leave it like this. It's not always going to be reduced. It's not always going to be reduced. Um, and then basically, so you see here that when we had the 4590, it's just multiplied by square root of 2. Ooh. And then to go backwards, it's just divided by square root of 2.